I think it's bad to have a social media platform. You try to get a bunch of followers if that's maybe the key thing to do what you're trying to do for your job or whatever. But I do think it's bad if you begin to try to associate is that, oh yeah, I got a lot of friends if that's all you've got. Welcome to Step Up, a leadership podcast designed to help you grow personally, professionally, and spiritually. I'm your host, Dave Kinney, and I'm joined by Amos Rivera and Pastor Chris Kuba. It's great to be back in the studio, guys. Yes. Back. I was right. thinking... New studio, by the way, if you're not... Yeah, it looks great. If you're those online, uh, you don't see it, but those of you that are joining us uh, on video, it digs. It yeah, looks, looks good. I like it. I like it. I was thinking about this uh, earlier this week. A guy we all know... Bruce, mm-hmm. yeah, we need to have on the podcast first of all. He's sure got an incredible story. He was talking to me about how he was roommates with Derek Jeter That's whenever crazy. he played rookie ball in the Yankee system, <laughs> and that he has worked with and and knows like the people in Winston Churchill's family, and like worked very closely with like Churchill's nephew or, or son or grandson or something like okay. that. That guy is incredible. Yes, like I, I'm sitting there thinking at this lunch, like. I don't know anyone famous. Like, I don't have that proximity of fame. Now, I do think I've met some cool people. Yeah. Like, I, I got to meet uh, George Bush W. at okay. a Rangers game a handful of years ago, and that was super cool. Was, how, what, how did that happen? Did you just walk up to him? We were at a game, and uh, me and a couple of my friends when we were in college, we got gifted really good seats um, awesome. by someone, someone's dad. And we just got to be down there, and he always sat next to Nolan Ryan in the same seats, and mm-hmm. we just kept walking down the stairs being like, man, these seats are really good. <laughs> and we get down there, and we're like seven seats away from you know Secret Service and George W. Bush, and he was the most friendly ever. Nice. He came to meet us and like let us shake his hand. Wow. It was the coolest thing. That's so cool. That's pretty I sweet. loved it. Have y'all ever met? Who's the most famous person that you've ever met? Um, I shared this story last time, but... Tim Brown is definitely the yeah, most dude, famous person. That's I've a ever crazy met. story. All famer. Sure. Yes, that was really cool. Um, Leon Bridges. Leon Bridges is, is okay. probably another famous Singer, person. Yeah. Uh, Fort Worth. Yeah. 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 Nice. Pastor Chris, what about you? Uh, I've met John Madden. Uh, I've met Jim Nance. I mean, just whenever you hear Jim talk, like it just he uh, he actually came to our church service that that I, w- I preached at, and he. It was just like amazing because he came to me. That was really good today, and just his voice just kind of That's shivers good. down my yeah. spine because yeah. yeah. I've just I've grown up and yeah. heard his yeah. voice for so long. And That's and uh, John Madden kind of being the same way. I met Tim Tebow. Uh, oh yeah, I've met him in a couple different. I've also met George Bush. It was at a speaking event, so that makes mine less cool. But well, no, (laughs) yours was cool because you found him in a setting that was way more natural for him in a baseball stadium than it would be for me, which was like he was speaking at something and it was kind of a backstage deal. And yeah, it was totally. I was in the line and whatever else. But yeah, yours is way cooler getting to meet. I've met a couple of professional athletes. Here's what's funny though. So um, I handled myself pretty well around some of these other ones that I just mentioned to you. The one time, though, that I just kind of got like tongue tied, couldn't talk. It was just this weird moment was when I met a guy named Bob Sturm, who is a sports talk radio Radio personality in Dallas. I used to listen to the ticket all the time. Love sports talk radio. Ticket's a great station. And I am at an event and I hear like, in fact, I was actually at a Dallas Stars press conference or something like that. I don't know how I got there. And so I'm seeing Mike Madonna, I'm seeing Brett Hull, like all these famous athletes, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> and I hear Bob Sturm's voice, and it immediately like, yeah, something about oh, it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and like, it was kind of like I fanboyed all of a sudden. Like I didn't yeah. really know what to do with myself and couldn't handle it. And you know, I was trying to figure out like, why did I act this way around this radio personality, and not around these other ones? I think I felt like we were we were friends. Like I felt mm. like we were like because you listen to him yes, often, all every day, every day. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, now nah, it's a it's a one way relationship, obviously. Yeah. But on the other hand, <laughs> uh, I felt like we were boys. Like yeah, we, I cool. was, I knew about his family. I mean, I, I mean, I that's I even funny. had to hold back, like asking him about his wife and his kids, and like mm. it, at the end of the day, I'm thinking he doesn't know me. This is yeah, so yeah. random. But it just yeah, it's kind of weird if you start weird. asking him a bunch yes. of questions, it's even so, though he's sharing stuff. Yeah. On air, but know. I mean, I, I felt like we were friends. Is what it felt like, what it seemed like, and uh, because of that, it was like, oh my gosh, there he is, there he is, kind of a thing. So I wonder what that Pretty is cool. that makes us feel like that. Because I've been in situations like that, or yeah. even like when I watch TV or something like yeah. that. There's a character or something that stands out that I'm like, man, I feel like I could be friends with that person. Sure. Hmm. 
And in reality, that just may not be the case. Well, but. especially like actors, right? They do such a good job, and then the, you kind of meet them, and they're not the character that they play, that you yeah. know them as. Right. But but you feel like you're friends with. Yeah, it feels like that a version. friendship. Yeah, yeah. 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 It feels like you're tight and close, and obviously you're not though, right? Let's so. let's talk about that a little bit though. Like one thing, Pastor, because I've heard you talk about before is um, the importance of friendships and the and the yes. different kind of friendships that men need to have in their lives in order to basically surround themselves with health and yep. all of that yep. kind of stuff. Um, give us, do you mind? I mean, I know that this yeah, is kind no, of random, no. but yeah. give us why that's important. And then let's kind of dive into that topic a little bit. Well, I, I've, what you're referring to, I've done it in the context of like ministry, because I feel like ministry is one of those places where um, you can have a lot of people that know you, but mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have an opportunity. You may not know a lot of other people, and that's that's something that's super important. But I think it's especially true with men. I, I wonder if part of this problem that we have is one just because of like social media. I've got a love mm. hate hate yeah. relationship with social media. Um, I, I mean, I mean, I, I understand it. I get it. I I mean, we obviously are promoting this on it. But that being said, um, I mainly just hate it and don't don't get on it a whole lot. I think part of it is just because it does give you the illusion of connection without mm. reality. Right. right? Yep. It's and deceiving so, the followers following totally. all that kind of stuff. And my yeah. wife, I don't know what it, she on Facebook. I, I've looked at this before. I haven't looked at it in a long time, but I feel like she has like just thousands of friends. <laughs> There's no way. There's no <laughs> right. way she knows that many people. And uh, just because of the nature of, of working in church and that kind of visibility type thing, I've had people come up to me and tell me things about my own kids and my own family that I had not even known. I didn't even know oh, that was the place because my wife shared it. She posted it on social media and she did mm. that. And so they feel like they're kind of like connected. And and it's probably the same way that I just did with with with, with Bob Serm, but on a, obviously a different level. But still, mm. I mean, even at the church, I've got folks now that come and they will watch online for multiple weeks. And so I'll go out in the lobby and I'll meet folks and they will feel like, oh yeah, and like they know me, right. but I don't necessarily know them well i can't imagine like one my wife's got a bunch of followers and whatever else and folks on, on facebook there's no way though that that is just not real at all mm -hmm. i think there is got to be some category for that um men may have a bunch of folks following them on social media there's a category there's got to be something for that but there's no way that's exactly what's the healthiest thing yep. for a man to thrive yep. um proverbs 18 24 it, it's a it's a great verse um it says, let me read it. Let me read it to you. It says, A man of many companions may come to ruin. It says, But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Yeah. I wonder if that is the, the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Companions aren't bad, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're in a, in a situation where you're in a forward, public facing type of role with your job, if you're, if you're a man. Um, you're a teacher, let's say, or let's say that you are um, somebebody who who's who's public speaks and so therefore you got a lot of visibility in that way or whatever yeah, your business owner is. or yeah. whatever it may be. People may know you, they may know things about you, they may know recognize people of your family, they may have that kind of connection to you. Um, that's not bad, it may be good for business, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. But I, I've got to wonder if that's what it means to have a companion. Uh, mm -hmm. A companion of many may come to ruin. I don't think it means it will. I don't even think it's bad to have that, that be the case. I don't think it's bad to have a social media platform. You try to get a bunch of followers if that's maybe the key thing to do what you're trying to do for your job or whatever. But I do think it's bad if you begin to try to associate as though, oh, yeah, I got a lot of friends if that's all you've got. Right. right? Because yeah. too many men, one, it's a false impression of yourself, mm -hmm. right? Because you only post the best things about yourself. And you only want people to see the best things. You're not going to put the, the hard moments and the difficult stuff. Yeah. Like and too many men are just isolated. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I read something that like 55% of men uh, would said 30 years ago that they had at least uh, six close friends. And now today that number is cut in half. Jeez. And um, I always say like this, who are going to be the six hands on your casket? Who are going to be the six well, guys? Well, isn't that an encouraging out? and fun thought exactly. for? <laughs> well, but think about it though. No, that's we, good. I do you, like you've that. Been, we were in the yeah. ministry. We know this. You got how are you going to get to Paul Bears? Uh, mm -hmm. You just kind of start grabbing yeah. random boyfriends and stuff like that because you don't have people that you're walking with that you're yeah. doing stuff with, and it's just vitally important that if a man is going to be what God's called him to be and he's going to step up in all the areas that he's supposed to, he's going to have to have 
a, a lot of different types of friends. One person may be able to be a lot of the different categories that I want to mention to you that I've talked about before, yeah. but they're not necessarily all going to be the exact same person, but you do have to have something more than a companion. A companion yeah. of many may come to ruin, yeah. but there is a friend that sticks closer yeah. and a brother i've got a brother you, you've got a brother yep I um i have multiple brother-in-laws yeah fix it you got a lot of sisters. Yep. you got some i got a lot of sisters and yep. so therefore i've got a lot of brother-in-laws and we're close so when you and what makes you close you guys you guys get together i'm assuming at family events and so therefore there's this regular rhythm absolutely so you're always going to be there yep. right regular rhythm whenever we've got family stuff and all of that but also it's it's continuous communication outside of that making yeah. sure that we're not just seeing each other, not just talking to each other about life and all that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, at Christmas and, and Easter and Thanksgiving, but ongoing, like yeah. making sure that you're doing that regularly. Yeah, my brother and I now, I think we've just lived so much life and have gone through so many different things and we've had our ups and downs, but I think now that we're much older, we've gotten a lot closer in the past year or so. Yeah. So, I mean, we it's more than just the normal events and holidays you probably got a group text with your family and yeah. that kind of keeps you connected that kind of thing yeah. i think you know there's a when you talk about a brother relationship mm -hmm. that the proverb that's mentioned there there's companions which are basically transactional surface things not bad but those are not the key things yep. and then there's a brother which is sort of like the i'm bread. not getting rid of him he's not getting rid of me yeah. and so therefore there's a little bit of that that makes it work mm -hmm. right because I'm not just gonna like get frustrated because you didn't do whatever, and then I just decide never to talk to you again, which mm -hmm. you can do with a companion. I mean, at the end of the day, if I am not, you know, in a certain role in a certain place, then somebody else is gonna be in that role, and guess what? They're gonna be a companion of that guy, not yeah. necessarily me, right? There's yep. not this strong relationship. There's a brother relationship. There's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's trying to associate the fact that you can have friends that have that brotherly type of connection. They just ain't going anywhere. Mm. Um, they, they're consistent. They, they're going to be with each other, and and they just got to got to keep doing that. And that so. can look that can look different for different things in your life, different times in your life, different sure. seasons, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, why don't you talk about that? Like what those categories that you mentioned? Yeah, of like the type of friend or whatever. Yeah, walk us through a couple of those. Okay, so uh, for instance, I think one of the things every man needs is a friend to celebrate with. Mm. Okay, um, so. I think as a man, uh, you know, we have seasons when we just kind of know, I just crushed it. <laughs> like, I just absolutely crushed it. I mean, uh, I'm in the ministry, right? So there, there's, there's, a, there's, I got a buddy of mine um, across town here in Houston that, like, I can call him on a Sunday afternoon and be like, this morning was awesome. <laughs> like, it just was awesome. It was great. And he's not going to lecture me and tell me, man, you need to be careful. You're going to get the big head or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can just say, hey, can I spike the football a moment? That's the phrase I'll use. Can right. I just spike the football for a moment? Yeah. And I just want to brag a little bit. And I and he's just gonna he's gonna listen to me and he's gonna say, dude, that's awesome. You did crush it. Yeah. Like and, and it's just an ability to celebrate loudly and proudly because we know that um, what God has called us to is gonna be hard, and the culture and people around us are always gonna remind us of ways that we've failed. Mm, yeah. yeah. In fact, it's actually um, it's almost celebrated whenever you see in terms of popular culture, men who basically are weak, bashful, shameful, whatever. Mm. And instead, if you're a man who's going to step up, which means you're going to have success, which means you're in, in your work, in, in your home or whatever, you need somebody, some, a friend that you can call and be like, dude, I just, you know, spike the football for a minute. Yeah, for sure. It's really funny that you bring that Killing up it. because <laughs> this, this past weekend, um, it just so happened that uh, our church and a friend of mine's church had collectively like really successful weekends yeah. where there was an event and it all went really well. Yeah. Nothing was like yep. awful or anything like that. And so on Sunday night, I texted my buddy who works at that other church and I was like, hey man, tell me how today was and tell me the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'm not going to call you arrogant sure, or sure. prideful or I'm not going to get on yeah. to you for ego. Let's just celebrate. Yeah. Like, can we just be like, yeah, man, today was incredible here's why this is what it looked like yeah. without having to feel like, okay, and now I got to paper that with like, yeah. you know, any kind of thing other yeah. than dude, I'm just celebrating what happened in my life. Don't disclaimer like, it. Just Don't give a, cool a bunch thing. of caveats. Yeah. Or like, I mean, I know the Lord did it and this, uh, yeah. no, like I crushed it. Like yeah. I today yeah. had a good day. Like yeah. I moved the ball down the field. And, and I think it, 
all of us in our work settings, in our life settings, like we want those opportunities whenever we can score 30 and somebody doesn't get onto you for not passing the ball too much. Instead, right. they can just say, you crushed it. Like, yeah. you, you were on fire tonight. And, and, and we, we need men in our lives who are going to encourage us because we need to win. Yeah. We need to be able to win. I think it's good to just be real in that way because I think more times we're our worst critics. So sure. I'm constantly thinking of ways that I can get better or or achieve or progress. And so naturally, if someone's like, oh, that was, that was really good, I'm already like, I could have done this, I could have tried this, next time I got it. So those few moments where you're like, dang, that was good, yeah. to be able to share that with somebody is just, that's yeah, awesome. Because why, we need why to critique, that? we yeah. need to get better, but yeah. for the... You can yeah. also 30 seconds, success. we need to be like, but I also crashed. Like, today. Yeah. Yeah. Like, today was a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about the two different uh, points of view on this. Why is that so important for, for me? Meaning whenever I come and I celebrate to y'all, yeah. hey, guys, I, I crushed it this week. It's my spike the football moment sort of a thing. Why is that important for me to do? Amos, you go first. Um, I think it's important because we need those moments of just building our self-esteem and building our confidence. And I think in those types of moments, it does kind of boost that, like, you do got this. So when those next moments come, you just have that much more courage and that much more, like, wind behind your sails of, like, all right, I'm going to go to the next thing with that much more, like, tenacity and excitement. Well, I also think it goes along. So like, let me even mention like another category that I would, I would add to this list as well of like a friend that you need. And I think that one goes to the other one. You need someone that you can celebrate with, but you also need somebody that you can grieve with. Mm. If you can celebrate big with somebody, then you can grieve big with somebody. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. We also know there's going to be those times when you're not going to have crushed it. Yeah. In fact, we're going to know there's some times whenever you are walking through heck you're walking through difficulty, you're walking through struggle, you're right. walking through strain. It is just one of those things where, man, you just feel like it's a grind. And man, you don't want to necessarily be like, you know, where, where you're, you're, you got to always kind of keep the face up. Man, there's just mm -hmm. sometimes when it just sucks. Yeah. Right? And it's just hard. And you've experienced some sort of loss. You didn't get the promotion. Somebody else got something that, and it, and it cost you dearly financially or whatever it may be. And you need the ability to call maybe that same person who you're also saying, hey, man, I just, no judgment. let me just, let me tell you what I did today was awesome. And also to be like, man, I just want to let you know, man, this is hard and I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. Like, I had so a rough day. day. Yeah. And I just want to tell somebody about it. Yeah. Right. And we, I mean, we end up suppressing that, like both the good and the bad, like the celebration is like, oh, I don't want to share it. Or then you go through something really difficult. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I don't want to share that either. I mean, sure. you that starts to jack with your, your mind, your emotions. I mean, then it starts to take a toll on everything and everyone around you. Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Mm. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a crier. I mean, I, I never, I feel like I never cry. I feel like I never necessarily do all of that. Uh, on a, I'm not like, a, you know, like going to get cried at the drop of a hat. I mean, I've had some moments, though, when it's been brutal. Yeah. Um, Dave, you and I talked last time just about the journey here in the last five years, and it's been amazing. But, man, there was some really hard, 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 hard moments. Yeah. And um, I remember the benefit and the comfort of being able to call a buddy. And I remember whenever I was just, I was, it was in my head about just, man, I've screwed your family up by moving them down, taking them out of the situation they were, moving them someplace that's unknown and, and all of that. And I remember calling a buddy and just being like, man, I, I, I think I, I may have messed up. I may mm -hmm. have I screwed up. I think I, I don't know what I've done to my family. And he just, he didn't give me a lecture and been like, what are you thinking this way for? And blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. That, that came along down the road, but it was mainly just, man, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just so sorry. And there was a little bit of like comfort of knowing like, okay, you're a friend that's going to be there when it stinks. Mm -hmm. You're also a friend that's going to be able to be there and not get upset with me when I celebrate. And, right. And so why is it a benefit to you? I think because you're also going to need somebody to grieve with along the way. Yeah, yeah for sure. You're going to have hurt. I remember I had a, one of my good friends who my grandmother died. And her funeral was in the middle of Texas. And um, I was doing the service. And, man, I was putting on the good soldier. And I was getting ready to everything. And I go out there. And I walk into the, the room. And he was sitting in the back. Mm. He had driven hours to show up there. 
And I'm telling you, I had no idea how much I needed mm -hmm. that visual in that moment at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't need to be the pastor. I didn't need to be the guy that held it all together. I didn't need to be the guy. I just needed to grieve that my grandma was gone. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and it hurt and it was difficult. And he was right there in the back. And man, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that moment. And you got to have men, too many men don't handle emotions well because they don't have a friend like that. Yeah. And because of that, they just shove it all in and then everybody else gets the carnage of it instead of being a healthy man who also yeah. has people that you can walk with. Yeah, I think what's really good about that and so important too is um, to be that for people because, I mean, it's, it's yeah, we go through those types of things and to, and to go and, and find those friends that can walk with us through grieving and down moments, but also being available in that way for those around us, which means we've got to put our head up Yep. A lot of times and not just make things or focus so heavily on ourselves. But um, I think that's being Jesus and we, that'll reveal a lot of ourselves as well. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to keep going uh, on a few. Cause I, I've even got a few that I would say like, these are the types of friends that every man should have. Yeah. But let me ask this question as we were kind of diving in, is this one person? Cause I, I know for me in my life, the two that we just talked about, the, the, the guy that you can celebrate with, the guy that you can mourn with, for me, that's two different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that's bad. No. I think that that's a good thing because it, now they can probably both do both. Yep. But sometimes if it is the Texas Rangers winning the World Series, totally. then, man, I was talking to all these friends of mine who some of them I hadn't talked to in over a year, yeah. but they were the <laughs> first people I called or texted to celebrate like, yeah. you did it. You yeah. know that kind of a thing, yeah. but then other times, whenever I'm mourning and something is really difficult, and I'm I'm grieving something and whatever it may be, that's going to be somebody else that I'm calling. Yep. But being able to benefit from both of those two, two different guys, two different relationships that I have in my life, was really really good. I, am I seeing that right? That this is multiple different relationships that you can have. It's not a one size fits all. It could be somebody that it could be your spouse. In fact, I think I'll, your my spouse yeah. Hillary would would be the. On, on most of the categories that I want to talk through, yes, that's going to be part of it. It could also be staff. I think part of the problem is is that too many guys, though, they're all uh, they they may either don't have these categories, and so because of that, they have a lot of surfacey relationships. Let me reword it: they have a lot of companions. Mm, right. Yep. They have a lot of companions, yeah. and so because of that, they're not going to if if you're owner of a business or you're working at a particular place, you're not gonna go in there and just celebrate with your companions because they're gonna think you're arrogant and they're gonna think whatever else, yep. and so you're not mm -hmm. gonna do that. And so what do you do? You don't learn how to celebrate well, which let's mm -hmm. translate that into, you're not gonna celebrate well with your kids. Yeah. You're not gonna celebrate well with other people that build them up because you've not modeled that. Yeah. Go the grieving piece, I think the same thing would be true is that you either just don't grieve, don't deal with it, or just take pride in the fact that you don't ever show emotion, that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. That right. is not healthy. We gotta be healthy, well-rounded people. Mm -hmm. And so I think you gotta have a friend that's six closer than their brother. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, it could be the same person. Right. And I think it could be different seasons yeah. where it's different folks. I think the key is though, do I have somebody that if, if, if I had the worst thing happen to me tomorrow, do I have somebody that I could call, know they would answer and know they would weep with me? Yeah. yeah. If I have the best thing that ever happened, do I have somebody that I could call and I could spike the football with, and they're going to be like, "God, that's awesome." Yeah, yeah. they're going to just they're gonna be they're going to be so happy for you and with you. Let me mention another category though, Dave, because I think this is key that may have also help some balance to some of that. Thirdly, you got to have somebody who you can be normal with. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's what I mean. So I'm in a context in a situation where, in my world, in my life, I've kind of always got to be on. I don't have a kind of clear cut cookie cutter nine to five job where basically I kind of go in here and then I leave the office and it's over and it, it's an ongoing. I think any most men most likely don't have a real cookie cutter nine to five job. They're probably going to be some bleed over and some overlap and some things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I also am a situation to where, you know, I, I always have to kind of be ready to speak up and say something and, uh, you know, all of that. So I need people then as well that I can kind of call and I don't have to be an expectation mm -hmm. of being on or do whatever. I need somebody that I can call and I can say, hey, man, what are you binging on Netflix? And I'm not going to get a lecture about binging on right, Netflix. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually going to give me recommendations yeah, of stuff yeah, they've yeah. watched. And we're just 
It's okay. Like that's yep, totally normal. Yeah. I want to be able to have friends that I can go on the golf course and I can shoot a really bad shot and I can get the club and knock it up against the tire yeah. and them not give me a lecture about how to take care of my property. No, I just <laughs> I'm mad. I yeah. missed the shot and I want somebody that I can just be I can be I can be me, right? And and, and we've mm. got to be careful that we don't have like a version of myself over here and then a version of myself over here. I, I get that. But on the other hand, I do need the ability, like for instance, um, when my family gets together, we wear different things than if we host a bunch of people. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. We are going to sit on the couch and relax and do stuff. Different people. We're going to eat out at, you know, on the couch and, you know, what else? We're going to be super yeah. chill. Yeah. And it's different when people come over. What do you do? You tighten up the house. You kind of get everything together. And I think sometimes we feel like we got to also do that with our own lives. And you need some friends, not that you can be crass with or unholy with. I'm not right. saying that. Right. But that you can be normal with, mm -hmm. who you can send them a funny meme and they can send you a funny meme and you wouldn't want anybody, everybody else to see it. <laughs> but on the other hand, you can laugh really, really hard yeah. because it's just, you're normal. You're, right. like, you're a normal person. And I would tell you, if there's any advice I could give to so many leading men out there, just be normal. Mm -hmm. Like if you're just normal, yeah. you're so far ahead of most other people. And a lot of men don't have folks that they can be normal with. And because of that, I think it creates a character, caricature, almost like an avatar type situation mm -hmm. to where that's what causes them to basically uh, either feel trapped or stuck or ultimately do things that disqualify themselves from the positions of leadership that they are because they weren't real along the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They weren't just normal. So. Well, I think it's also, I think that's freeing for a lot of people to have the encouragement of like, you just need to have friends that you can be normal with. Emily and I talk about it all the time. Like who are the friends that we have that they can come over in their pajama pants and yep. a t-shirt and just sit and yep. we don't even have to do anything. Like, yeah. we, they can just, they can see the mess. They can hear the kids screaming, yeah. they can yeah, yeah. whatever. And we can just kind of hang out with, and that's brought us so much life. Yeah. Uh, not because we've got this facade up to the world and sure. this is how we want to present ourselves or anything like that. Sometimes though, you just want to go home and you want to relax and yep. not have to feel like you're trying to do anything or be anything or push the ball down the field in any yep. way or anything like that. It can be really freeing though for a lot of men who, um, I'm going to say it like this, maybe carry around a lot of pride yeah. of wanting to be viewed in some Tell way. Mm. Like, let's let this be freeing for those men of like, hey, step up drop that pride wall and just be you like just be a yeah. normal person you don't have to have it all figured out you don't have to have that car in the garage you don't have to have that going yeah. on like you can just be you and if it's good enough for god i promise you it's going to be good enough for the friends that god wants in sure. your life yeah. sure. and that can that can be life-giving to you yep. it's no longer the pressure of having to live up and to attain to something it's way more about like yeah i'm just a normal dude and i'm just yeah. I spill spaghetti on myself yeah. whenever I eat all the time, you know, yeah. that kind of a thing. One of the ways that I gauge that is just like based on energy. Like if I'm hanging out with somebody, is it costing me energy to be on or to be around versus this is rejuvenating and it's refreshing yeah. and it's actually charging me up, yeah. I think is way to kind of Well, gauge. Dave, I remember early on whenever you got here, um, this is part of when I knew it was going to work well not just rela work relationship but also just hanging out because i remember we were watching a baylor game and i'm screaming at the tv and you're screaming at the tv yeah. back and it was sort of like this is good it's a guarantee because you don't want to be in a situation to your point where you're like i gotta be like cautious i gotta be whatever yeah yeah no like I, I, that's a dang foul like yeah. you missed the foul <laughs> like what are you talking about like what's wrong with you whatever and, and you don't want people to be like oh well you know the pastor's doing this or whatever the case may be right. and i mean guys just need relationships where you mm -hmm. can scream at the ref and just know that you're screaming at the ref you're into the <laughs> yeah. game you're having fun you're, I'm a f i mean i'm a fan i'm a normal normal guy i want my kids to see that i want my friends to see, i mean i, I want to have people in my life that can foster that and help that in every yeah. way yeah pc that's that's really really good i think that that's gold a, a friend to celebrate with a yeah. friend to mourn with and absolutely a friend to just be normal with mm -hmm. and, and so for all of the listeners that we may have today, I think that's enough of, of good next step homework uh, for them to take. Let's keep going though. Next time maybe, well, let's, let's let's do a part two. Okay, okay. Because I, I know that there's, there's a few more that I want to ask yeah. you some questions yeah. on yeah. Uh, as far as what I've heard you talk about yeah. and all of that. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a part Perfect. two for this episode and we'll keep going. Thank you so much for listening to the Step Up Podcast. Uh, it's an absolute honor for any additional information to like, to subscribe, to share. Uh, all of those things. You can get more information at chriscuba.com. 
Uh, please help us get the word out about this podcast by sharing it and telling your friends about it and sending them the link and all that good stuff. Guys, we will be back in the studio very soon. All right. Sounds good. See you guys. Thanks for listening to the Step Up Podcast. Do us a favor and like, subscribe, and share this episode to help us get the word out. We would love to hear from you, so please leave us a comment and even leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. For additional information or to reach out directly, please visit chriscuba.com. That's chriscuba.com. You can follow Pastor Chris on social media and just search Chris Kuba, K-O-U-B-A. You can also follow United City Church on all socials at United City Church. That's U-N-T-D City Church. Thanks so much.